Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode number 12 of my Feed the Beast Monster Series. Back again with, I am your host, Bunny Vulture. How's it going, guys? Uh, as you see here, I've got my pumpkin farm going, and right along with my melon farm, and you can see I've kind of uh, decided on a light source. I uh, went ahead and I had four of the little uh, Thumbcraft 4 uh, Niter Flames um, going, so I thought, you know, that might be kind of cool. Uh, it, it's a decent uh, light source, and it doesn't really have to connect anything. It's just kind of a floating flame, and I've always liked the... Uh, the way those look so I'm gonna go ahead and use those as my flame source uh, or my light source rather out here in my farm area um, I only have four so I need to make some more so I'm gonna get into Thomcraft soon um, I know it's changed quite a lot I mean big time from what the way Thomcraft 3 was um, so I'm definitely gonna do a video on that hopefully not make it too boring what not for you guys because I've watched some of it uh, from Twitch streams and whatnot and it is kind of it is kind of boring you know it's not real exciting unless you like you're talking with somebody you're interacting with chat or something like that and then you can you know talk with people um, but being by yourself and just making a recording of it not all that thrilling but we'll see uh, so yeah I'm gonna get some more of that stuff uh, probably do a video of it so I can get some uh, more flames for here uh, I've also got the harvesters moved over. I took rid, I got rid of the one I got for the jungle tree. Went ahead and harvested all that jungle wood. Replant, uh, reset up the harvesters over here with, excuse me, the uh, saplings for spruce, uh, birch, and oak, and got those set up. I also pre-laid the path for three wide and a range extension of from the default three to a maximum of five. So I need to make some uh, range upgrades for both the harvester and the planters that I'm going to have uh, down here. So I'm going to move that. I actually need to move that planter over one so it'll be in the middle. Um, I've also, as you can tell via the new armor icons on my left hand side and the gauge on my right hand side, that I've made some power suit armor. Uh, I didn't record this mainly because it's th this mod has been around for quite a bit of time, uh, and it's pretty grindy. It's it, it re it's grindy and resource intensive. Um, so it, you make it with uh, well, if you're if you're not familiar with it or don't know really know what the power suit is, um, you basically make it. Uh, Basically make them with the same way you you would in the same pattern you would regular armor except you got electronic circuits to it And it's all module you can see here. It's got these are all the different uh, components of it here on the bottom side uh, It's got you know solenoids uh, high voltage capacitors Parachute and whatnot so you need all those little uh, mod things to go into a tinker table and then you can uh, you see here when you if you wanted to add a add a piece like a jetpack, you would need to install four ion thrusters, and then you choose how much thrust you want to give it and however much you know of these of various things you get them on give on here it determines how much you know battery you drain. Um, but one thing important if you don't know is you can move you know as you can see I'm moving pretty fast here, uh, but one thing you want to be wary of. Is that if your weight, uh, all these little modules and stuff not uh, and whatnot have a certain weight size to them. So if you go over 25 kilograms, you're gonna start to slow down. You're not gonna move as fast. So right now, I think with all my pieces, I'm at around 17, uh, four, three, four, and four, or uh, four, four, and four, and three. So I'm seven and seven roughly. Uh, so I'm right at about 14. So I'm pretty good. So I'm moving still pretty fast, and this allows me to essentially get around a lot faster than I was with just the jetpack and whatnot so yeah i'm really happy with that it's just not really exciting to make a video on just because basically all you're all i'm doing is making lots of iron plates and shaping them into circuits and putting them into a pattern and throwing you know making stuff here going back and forth between here and there and whatnot so not all that exciting although uh, one thing I just did, um, which I guess could have made that a lot easier, was uh, hooking the pulverizer directly into the redstone furnace. I know you can just simply put these next to each other, uh, but I wanted uh, some internal buffering between the two so I could store 
uh, lots of the pulverized, pulverized uh, metals and just put you know a whole a stack full of ore in here have it go through the pulverizer and turn into stacks of dust and go into the, my furnace and then go into an ender chest which is the same ender chest that links up to the quarry so it just goes right into my AE system so I just wanted kind of like a big old set it and forget it type situation um, I did the same th so that's why I moved the uh, Bioreactor over here because I finally connected my. I, I wasn't gonna do it, but I went ahead and did it because I was uh, stocking up on, a lot on um, melons and pumpkins. You see here, I got ten thousand, and this is with me using them. So when I wasn't using them, uh, when I wasn't processing them, I was going pretty slow. I'm only at two hundred eight pumpkins, um, but yeah, I'm going through getting a, an insane amount of that stuff. Um, so I got all that going into here into the bioreactor with a 25% efficiency, or not 25%, just efficiency 25. Um, so I'm gonna get the, you know, that's why I wanna get those sapling, uh, essentially tree farms going for the saplings, so I can think, make this, bump this up, you know, efficiency wise, so it doesn't use as much, um, so I make more biofuel per, per my uh, stuff. The other things that I did uh, was to make a upgrade the redstone energy cell to a resonant energy cell so that I could just have more storage and a bigger buffer. Um, for you know my engines and whatnot um as you can see here i'm getting quite a bit more biofuel since i've gotten that stuff going i think i've given i've in my um, non-recording time i've gained about three hundred thousand biofuel maybe not quite that but pretty close it's been pretty nice uh lastly the other thing was i put uh automated my smelter a little bit for the glass because i was doing it the slow way and it was driving me nuts and I want to finish this roof off. I'm uh, just making this little thing right here, this big window, and expanding that one took quite a little bit of time. So yeah, I wanted to automate that a little bit. Uh, so I put um, just a little thing here to drop all you know a bunch of sand in here, and then the clock on here to just output you know, the glass. So yeah, nothing special. So what I think we're gonna do today is get another power source with a mod that you may not have uh, been familiar with. Uh, what I said I was going to try and work on, let me put these melon seeds back in here, uh, is the mod called Big Reactors. And this is kind of a cool mod. It produces quite a bit of redstone flux. Uh, and you may think like, well, why did, why, hey, Bunny Vulture, why do you need, you know, more redstone flux? You got, you know, those lava dy dynamos there producing, you know, your, your cells are full, you know, you got this thing full. Um, I do. I got a pretty good amount of energy right now, but the one thing I don't have is, uh, one thing you might have noticed is that I have all of that just sitting there. And I got this guy going along at a slow pace. Now, while I know there, uh, I think the the maker of uh, thermal expansion is is working on uh, modular upgrades for his um, items like the redstone furnace and pulverizer and whatnot, similar to how you can put overclockers in the you know macerator and comp uh, compressor and whatnot. Um, it's just not there yet. So I want to get you know kind of like an IC two assembly line uh, as well to kind of go with my um, redstone flux line ther or thermal expansion line but I'm going to need a good bit of power to get overclockers going and the big reactors are going to uh, help me do that um, now what I'm going to do is create a, a reactor but that nuts going to by default create me lots of redstone flux and so I'm going to have to convert that and then I came across a um, another mod I think it's this one engineers toolbox I think I believe it's called yeah and in it it has a EU adapter uh, so what that does is I can use my like my tesseract and I can just convert my um, EU power or red, rather the redstone flux power just stick this little guy on there and it converts it into EU just like that boom done I have EU power all of a sudden so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna, and I, what I'm thinking about doing is converting, sticking a tesseract right on my big reactor, and then sending the power that way, um, and then putting the uh, tesseract 
or rather I think I'll put the EU adapter right on the big reactor and then send that into the Tesseract and then I can just have the Tesseract going right next to a, an MFSU and then have that into the bank of you know providing power to everything. We'll see how it sets up. I'm not really sure how I'm going to design it quite just yet, um, but I do want to get the big reactor being built. So in order to do that, and the re it's kind of a cool mod. You can make them, and the reason they're called big reactors is you can make them pretty big. It's kind of it, it kind of falls along the same type of uh, the reasoning as say you can make the uh, the molecular assembly cha chamber. You can make them kind of as as big as you want, as long as they're a square, rectangle, you know that type of stuff. Um, so I'm gonna need some casing, and it is a reactor casing. casing which is this guy uh, which is basically you got steel of various sorts graphite bar and uranium ignit it looks like in the middle or eulorium potentially hmm that's a different ones so we're going to design a reactor essentially to go down here. At least that's what I'm thinking. I'll, I'll probably end up moving it because I'm going to probably end up putting, uh, you know, the same type of line of this type stuff. I'm probably going to make another one of these guys here and one of those guys here and probably make another room for the big reactor. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and put it down there. So, but I need steel. So. I should have steel somewhere, maybe. I thought I did. Man, I'm trying to get these things, you know, to where you actually have a decent. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted. Tinker's construct. Um, oh, where's. Shoot, I wanted big iron steel. There we go. There we go. Steel dust. All right, iron coal. So I'm gonna go ahead and make. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and make up some reactor casings, and I will be right back. All right, guys, I am back, and I have made up 52 reactor casings in 40 to 40 reactor glass. And just like uh, a lot of multi-block structures here in Minecraft, um, it it's requires a basic shell, just like a tank and just like the assembly chamber is. Um, so we are gonna go ahead and make this guy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think. So um, if we put a fuel rod here, and right there, and four fuel rods, that will work. Okay, so I'm gonna make this one, two, three, four, five, uh, right in the middle, so yeah, that will work. So I'm just gonna make this a big rectangle, kinda. And yeah, let's fly a little bit here. Oops. Still getting used to the controls on this power suit. basic uh, outline all right so that's the basic shell that you need and then on the bottom uh, actually kind of all around you can use the you don't have to use uh, but it's good to use the reactor glass because instead of just one reactor uh, you know you can use the casing if you want uh, but you put one casing in there with some hardened glass you get two reactor glass so it's kind of you save a little bit of resources not a lot but it is you know when you're still producing stuff it kind of makes sense to uh, save when you can especially when it looks you know pretty good I, I, I'm not a fan of the, the texture um, but you know to each his own you got to make something different um, 
so let's save a little bit of time, a little bit of resources, and still gives you the same effect. Why not? All right, so looks like I need uh, three there, and what did I end up using? There's five by four, so that's twenty. Need another twenty, so twenty-three glass and another. Oh, actually, I'm gonna need twenty-three glass plus another some down there, so I'll probably make another 40-some glass and some more casings. Um, pardon the uh, flight sound there. I should probably have turned my, my sound down on that. Um, but the other things that I will need, and I'm going to go ahead and make these uh, off-camera, is the um, uh, you'll need a reactor control rod, and that kind of makes it, you know, so you'll need more casings, some more graphite bars, redstone, uh, uranium ignit. Uh, you also need a controller. Uh, that, that's what turns the reactor on and off. You also need uh, access ports. You need import and an out, input and output. So I'll need two of these. Um, I also need the power tap. And that, these are the basic things. So I'll need, I'll need one of these to essentially take the power out of it. And then you need the fuel rods to go inside. So then you need you know, a few of these. And I think what you do is you put the reactor casing on the bottom and then you put the fuel rods uh, on top of that to go up to the top and then you put, put the control rod on the top but I'll, I'll I'll make all this stuff and I'll show you how it's kind of laid out uh, once I get back so I'll be right back all right guys I think I have enough to get this started I went ahead and filled this the rest of this uh, stuff in with what I needed uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in the fuel rods and what those do is you just stick them down kind of like so that and one of the things that you would pr you probably want to do is um, separate out your kind of your input and output and I think what I'm gonna do is hmm I kind of want to stick these on the back so you don't see them but I'm probably gonna move this anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and do it like that um, and then I'm gonna put the turn on there the power there a blank casing there and some glass here and the other thing you need are the control rods on top so I'm gonna put those like there Oh, I am actually too glass shy. Let me fix that. I know I got enough stuff to do that. So, at least I thought I had enough stuff to do that. Oh, yeah, I got lots of stuff to do that. All right, that'll do. Like that and one left over so I made just the right amount of reactor casings and I'll probably need more anyway when I go ahead and expand this so if everything looks right right well, why aren't you a thing what did I do different what did I do wrong that's right that's right, you should be a thing. Why aren't you a thing? Am I missing? Yeah, this texture is just throwing me off here. I got glass there. Everything is set there. Oh, yeah, I am missing one. I was gonna get upset there I'm like I'm pretty sure I got everything right all right so parting glass there there we go so I did make not just the not just about the right amount the right amount I just didn't have it didn't have it all with me uh, all right so put you there and doom there we go so you, you can see how here the edges kind of change like uh, the Mac did once you formed it up it kind of corners kind of changed and everything so now I got a control panel here it tells me that the reactor is offline got zero heats and it's got two fuel rods and zero zero whatnot 
waste auto eject, activate, and whatnot. So basically what you would do is I'm gonna set this one to out so that I can differentiate so that all my uh, import stuff, the fuel will go in, in here and out there. And then I'll be able to tap the power off of this guy right here, which I'll put the Tesseract on it right there. And then I'll put the uh, AE system going into there and then also in here. So I'm probably, what I'm probably gonna do is put a Tesseract right there and then a simple little AE cable running here to here kind of, you know, and then down the middle. And I'll probably send a little long run all the way over there. And that's my cat in the background. <laughs> He's in here with me. Um, so yeah, and the other thing you can do to kind of make this more efficient since this does generate heat is to put water around the fuel rods. What's the matter, Bubby? Ground out the other cat outside the office. Uh, anyway, I want to go ahead and st probably stop this video here. Uh, and what, I, what I'll do is I will show you the end result once I get this filled up with water. And I'll be right back. All right, guys, I am back, and I got the tank filled up with water, and I took a stack of yellorium, uh, which you use for fuel, uh, and you can also, um, getting a little ahead of myself here, is um, when you put the yellorium inside the re reactor, the waste product you get is actually the cyanide ignit, and you can use this in a, is it here? There's a thing you can do with this here, you know, is the cyanide reprocessor. And you build one of these guys and you can, tur you can turn the cyanide into plutonium. And the plutonium also acts as a fuel. So you can take all your lorium waste product and then put it back in here if you so choose. Um, so yeah, you can have like a, you know, a big reactor for your main fuel source for your lorium. And you can have a small one for your waste product if you want to. So, yeah, it's an option. So anyway, I wanted to show you what this does. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 64 in here. It looks like it already took the 32 to t turn everything out on. And you can see here the fuel rods went in there. And you can see how they went ahead and turned yellow. If I turn, look at this, you can see how the fuel is all full. Everything's enriched. And I can activate it. But before I do that... I got my tesseracts here with me, so I'm going to go ahead and stick you right there. And I'm going to call, this is my first tesseract, so I'll call you device 10. And I'll call you um, reactor power. And I'm going to turn those off, and this is going to send energy. There we go. going to go ahead and activate. So you can see how this is producing power and it's producing quite a bit. This is a fairly small reactor. It is only a, a five by, what is this, five by five by seven, which is two fuel rods and it's producing just under 600 RF per tick. Not bad at all compared to these guys, which are 80 RF per tick. And I got six of those, right? Yeah, six times 80, that's 480 RF versus 600 right now. So 480, 600. Now granted, I got two of these. So that's, you know, you know 960 you know, RF right here when that little setup compared to, you know, the um, you know, 600 here. So 300 more, you know, about 400 more RF, 400 more RF per tick rather than this one. So yeah, this is smaller, kind of looks cooler than that, but who doesn't want a big old reactor? And the cool thing about this is, 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 it, is it is expandable. So I don't have to have the water in there. It just makes it more efficient. It keeps the, the heat down. So you can see how the heat here is pretty low. Uh, energy buffer here is pretty, um, this is you know where it stores up energy. So I'm not really taking the energy any, anywhere. Um, see how the fuel usage is pretty low. I'm not really chewing through my Eulorium except for the, the initial fuel up to power the rods. So it's pretty good. I'm not sure what the usage is on these. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, when I was on my test world messing around with it, every time I went back to it, 
it seemed like it, the fuel never went down. Um, I know I know it does go down after a time. I guess it kind of depends on how, how much it's being used. Um, but with this, I can make this thing pretty big. All it would take is to just move this back two and just expand it. And I can get fit, fit two more fuel rods in there. And then all of a sudden I'm making, uh, you know, probably double this. So that's pretty nice. And I can do the same thing. I can just, you know, expand it you know, one thing this way, and I got, you know, one thing that way, one thing that way, and I got, you know, a bunch more fuel rods in here. So that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is go up here, um, and then uh, see if this thing, see if my design that I was thinking about is going to work. So I need an EU adapter. So in order to make that, I need some slabs, um, a sweet redstone ignit. What is this? that I'm not sure what that is and can't make that huh maybe I won't be able to do that like I thought I would be able to because I don't know what that is but let's go here um, and where is the No, it was just there, wasn't it? Well, I can do this like that and like that, and I made one of those and like that. Okay, let's make some slabs of some sort like that. I should that should. Here, 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 and then whatever this is. Hmm. I'm gonna look that up real quick here. All right, I'm gonna look what see what that uh, the sweet redstone ignit is, and I will be right back. All right, guys, we're back, and I decided to go ahead and scrap the idea of using the this thing. Um, the more and more I looked into it, it is a single block, but to get to that block. You need to make this sweet redstone ignit, and in order to make that, you need what's called a multi smelter, which is down here. It's one of these modular things, and you slap that on this modular socket along with some other stuff, and I just get it ended up getting more and more complicated. So I just decided to use the mod that I knew about, which was uh, power converters and this kind of goes along with the same stuff that goes in with mine factory loaded I think the same guy that makes that makes this so it's pre no frills it is it requires more blocks but it's it still needs you know some decent stuff you know in order to make the redstone flux consumer I needed uh, three leadstone energy cells and then I needed uh, like an MFE and inside the HV consumer or producer rather because I need that instead and then I need to make an MFE in order to take it so you still need a fair amount of blocks to do it so in order to get this set up I'm gonna go ahead and stick you up there and I'm gonna put you receiving energy right there and I'm gonna need to stick my redstone flux consumer right there and then my energy bridge right there my HV producer there and my MFE right there and just like that you see I'm getting power in industrial craft power just like that so this is going up at a pretty good ticket not so it's not so bad already a hundred thousand this thing stores four million um, so my big reactor is doing a pretty good job uh, but since industrial craft has seemed to have changed, I know all the textures have changed, uh, I was looking up the different type of transformers that I need. Uh, and I think, now that the MFE uh, outputs in 512, I think I need a medium voltage transformer, I believe, to take this down to low and then a, a low to take it down into to these guys. But instead of that, I think what I'll do is I go ahead and keep it at that and just use a transformer upgrade on my uh, IC2 machines here. Now it's not going to stay here. I'm gonna, I just wanted to kind of set it here so I could show you. But I'll, what I'll probably end up doing is probably actually 
reorganize my layout here a little bit and make a bunch more uh, applied energistics cables. Um, I'm going to probably make three or four stacks of these guys uh, along with some interfaces, uh, some more you know export, import buses, whatnot, um, and kind of get everything laid out. I want to make a few more uh, pulverizers, a couple more redstone furnaces, uh, and kind of lay out my uh, industrial craft setup here, my thermal expansion area over here, um, and then I'll uh, keep that in my uh, tinkers area. So I'm going to kind of lay out everything uh, in kind of like a little power generation or more like a processing area type thing, I think. Um, so I'm going to do that uh, kind of in the off-camera area, off-camera action, and I'll show you guys how that's all set up. Uh, in the next episode. Uh, other than that, I, I think uh, I also uh, gonna make the upgrades for my uh, tree farms out there and get those going so I can show you that as well. And then hopefully for the design aspect of the update uh, for the next episode, I will have some sort of roof action going on. And I may even you know record some of that. I'm not really sure. Uh, leave me a comment if you want to see me designing the roof. Um, I'm, or just leave me a comment with what you think I should be showing. Uh, a lot of the, if you think I should be showing some of the crafting and some of the resource gathering, just let me know, and I'll record it. Just let me know. Uh, thanks again for watching. Please leave me a like and share the video. And thanks a lot for watching again. Bye guys.